director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McCrory, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AIM Impact on Your Health. AIM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn, well, at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AIM Impact on Your Health, heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AIM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and of course, where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, well, today's the last official closing of the month day of our show, because it's the 30th. We uh, will be turning the calendar page here come Friday. We'll be talking more about our schedule, because it'll be April on Friday, April Fool's Day nonetheless. Um, today, we're going to open it up to you today. I'm going to talk some more about, uh, and I'll get into this issue the the cancer issue. We had a um, uh, one article sort of triggered me to thinking about cancer items. I brought that to your attention on Monday. I'm sort of um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a, a phase now. I went to the blogosphere last night and uh, I uncovered some new things. It had been a while since I'd been there. And as always, I'll share them with you. By the way, uh, you may share it with me and with us anything you'd like to at all. It can pertain to cancer therapy. It doesn't have to. Pertain to anything on your mind that you'd like to discuss. The number to do that, as always, is 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. So, yeah, we'll open it up for you today. We'll let you give us a call and uh, set the agenda if you'd like. Uh, I'll bring some things to you. You bring some things to me, and we'll all benefit from it. 412-825-6262. Now, um, calendar-wise, here's the way it's going to start shaping up. Uh, on Friday, we do kick it off uh, with uh, quite of a bang, big of a bang. Uh, Dr. Edward Kondrat is going to be our guest on Friday, and he's coming here on anticipation, well, coming here by voice, because we'll be talking to him by phone uh, to his home in Phoenix, Arizona. But he's a Pittsburgh guy, born and raised around here. Uh, educated, and then uh, set up his practice here in the Mount Lebanon area. He is a very accomplished ophthalmologist. Uh, he's become even more accomplished since he left here because, well, he treats eye disorders in a completely different way. Uh, he utilizes unconventional therapies because, as you would well know from listening to, well, listening to this station, they work. And uh, in so doing, he's quite unique. He's one of a kind. Uh, I like to say, and uh, we'll be bringing him here on Friday to kick off a month of anticipation because in the month of May, he'll be coming here in the flesh to conduct one of his uh, treatment seminars. It'll be held here in the office um, the week, the second week in May. Now, uh, he arrives um, the weekend, uh, the first weekend in May, and then on the 8th, there will be, you can anticipate the uh, that you might like to come and and be here with respect to his free general seminar. He usually covers just general topics, but he gives you an opportunity to ask him questions related to what might be your eye condition, your eye disorder, to try to get a feeling for whether or not you'd like to be treated by him. Now, if you would like to be treated by him, um, he stays in Pittsburgh for the next three days, 9, 10, and 11, treating a brand new group of patients. Usually the group is, a, is around 10. Uh, when I last spoke to him, he already had five out of the 10, and uh, there's room for five more, at least at last blush. We'll learn more about how many openings are actually available when we talk to him on Friday. But we're going to give him an opportunity to spend some time with us on our radio show to talk about his, uh, his way he approaches eye treatment. Many of you have already been to his general seminars. I've seen so many of you there. Many of you actually have been treated by Dr. Codrick. You may want to call in and share your experience with all of us. Anyway, 
Dr. Ed Kondrat will be our guest on Friday for the entire hour talking about his, well, his, his philosophy of treatment and uh, let him shed some light on his treatment seminar coming up in May. Now, in the following week, on Wednesday, Susan smith Joan returns. She'll be back to talk about the cleanse, the detoxification. Um, it'll be spring. You know, it is spring. Uh, spring house cleaning means all of the house, your own personal house to boot. And so cleanses uh, need to be accomplished a couple times of the year. No better time than in the spring. And let her discuss with you what her approaches have been to these uh, famous cleanses and detoxes. Then on Friday, in a back-to-back -back Friday fashion, Dr. Kondrat will return. We're going to be two, doing two Fridays back-to-back -back with him to allow him to explain even further uh, his philosophy of, of uh, treatment approaches to eye disorders. How that really does vary, because he certainly knows what the conventional treatment approaches are. Uh, he just, for the most part, doesn't choose to use them. Funny how, how that is. Uh, when you become enlightened, you really then... Don't even use what you've been trained to use. Uh, okay, the following week after that, on the 13th, the girls will be here. Talking about Judy and Susan. And uh, they uh, run a company called Free Nervous Thermography. Uh, they come to my office at least once a month, sometimes twice, depending on what time of the year and how much of a, uh, a demand there is. But each and every month they're here. By the way, they are here in the month of April on the 21st. So if you were thinking about uh, getting another thermogram done, because, well, it's your annual checkup thermogram, because you don't do mammograms anymore, and uh, you know every year you want to repeat that thermogram, well, in the month of April, they're here on the 21st. Plenty of slots open if you wanted to enroll in one of them. The number to do that is just give us a call uh, after about 9 o'clock today, and once Kim is here, the uh, office manager at the 724-942-3002. We'll be talking to the girls on the 13th. Now we're going to be talking to the man. Now I'm talking about Dr. David Brownstein, uh, really quite the man, author extraordinaire now, uh, nine books into it. We discussed his first book called Iodine. Well, we discussed it when he first published it eight years ago. Then we took a run at it um, just within the last month. Now he returns to talk about pretty much a an associated uh, set of issues because you can't talk about iodine without its relationship to thyroid disorder. And so we are going to be having a discussion about thyroid disease with Dr. David Brownstein on the 15th. Uh, you may want to um, get his book um, before you even... Let me find it. Where, where do we have him here? Uh, yeah. Oh, I have his, um, I don't have the 800 number right offhand. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, let me give you that 800 number for those of you who may want to get the book in anticipation for Dr. Brownstein's uh, visit here on the show. His website is www.drbrownstein.com. That's with a DR and no period at the F of the R. drbrownstein.com. And the phone number is uh, 888 Six four seven five six one six. That's eight 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 six four seven one six. A whole bunch of books now written. Uh, just looking at a couple of these titles. Uh, Iodine: Why You Need It. Well, we have talked about that. Overcoming thyroid disorders. We're going to be talking about that. Here's some of those other titles uh, we had mentioned briefly the uh, last time we had them on the show. Uh, Drugs that don't work. Natural therapies that do. Uh, how about this uh, as a title? Another one has Salt Your Way to Health. I know there's those uh, salt uh, scare folks out there that think you should never, and my profession is very good at uh, trying to convince you, you should stay away from salt. turns out, and he proves it uh, in, in, in a number of ways, uh, that salt absolutely is nothing that you have to shun, except there's a small percentage of people that do have some pretty uh, violent reactions to salt. But this is nothing that goes unnoticed. I mean, if you have such reactions, you know that, and uh, you would be a person that would want to stay away from it. But the bulk of you out there, not so. Another one of his books, The Miracle of Natural Hormones. Uh, we'll talk about that sometime. Overcoming Arthritis, 
another a guide to healthy eating, a guide to gluten-free diet, a guide to dairy-free diet, and um, I see um, actually a book that uh, he didn't even mention that he wrote, The Miracle of Natural Hormones. Hey, it's an interesting one. We'll let it go at that. Uh, got that number again. The 800 number is uh, 888-647-56.6 for Dr. David Brownstein. Now, uh, also on the 21st of the month, and so those of you out there listening to the many opportunities you've had to hear Jerry Singleton, he's been on the show quite a bit. He'll be on the show again. Jerry represents a company that uh, distributes this MCG machine here in the western Pennsylvania area. We're just lucky enough to literally get it first. And uh, we've made a big deal of it each and every time we've had the opportunity to have the device here. Uh, we do testings of any of you out there who think you'd like to have such a test. Uh, after all, your insurance is cover it. Uh, it's a six-minute test. You lie down completely clothed, exposing ankles and wrists, and we do need to put one lead to the left side of the chest. So it's a five-lead test. Uh, and uh, literally in six minutes, it actually does five separate tests, each of the tests lasting 82 seconds. You can't tell the difference. Just move from one test to another to another without your awareness. But interestingly enough, by doing so, it's able to give us the same information about you as we would learn from a full-blown cardiac cath which none of you ever wants to have, and I don't want you to ever have to have one of them. So it's something you would never walk into your doctor's office and ask for, yet the information uh, would be invaluable. We're learning so many things about patients that I've known for years. Some um, are getting a wake-up call about their status where they thought everything was always well because they're feeling so good. You can't let how you feel dissuade you from the uh, information that you learn about yourself, and then the better uh, issue is what to do about it once you find out what your cardiac status is, and I say that's where our real edge is anyway, always in giving you an opportunity to improve yourself in such a way so that you could follow yourself with this testing into the future and see the improvement each and every advancing test session. So that's on the 21st. Plenty of slots still open, but a lot of you have taken me up on my, op my offer so far. Uh, we are running these on the 21st of April. They'll start at 9 o'clock. They'll go to 5, and uh, we'll run them every 15 minutes, and so uh, you won't be here that long. Keep in mind that when you come on that day, already have in mind what your next free day will be because we'll want to get you scheduled to come on in and see me to discuss the results, by the way, also covered by your insurance. So this literally ends up costing you nothing, but you'll have an opportunity to get the test. So sit down with me so that we can go over the results of that test and then how you really should be looking at that test and giving you some ideas, especially if you've never had the opportunity before to meet me, um, give you some ideas as to how you, you can change those results to improve them as time marches on. And uh, that number, once again, here at the office, you can give us a call as soon as the radio show is over, 724-942-3002. Uh, Kim will be in the office by then. Just uh, pick a time slot somewhere between 9 to 5 on the 21st, and uh, we'll meet up with you then. Okay. Uh, other things I want to bring to your attention. Oh, we got the full supply of the back in. I know I mentioned it last week. I keep on forgetting to re-mention it. The uh, bioengineered algae concentrates that were invented by Dr. Michael Kiriak. And then, uh, of course, he did that while he was a scientist, a Soviet scientist, when the Soviet Union was uh, was in full bloom. Then he matriculated on to Canada. He hooks up with a guy named Roland Thomas. It's Roland that we've had on our show multiple times to tell us the story of Kiriak and describe this interesting supplement, sort of uh, the one supplement fits all. It has so many things in it. Anyway, the uh, supply of the supplement 
which comes in three different forms, F1, F2, and F3. F3 is the most uh, potent of the formulas. It's the one that we carry the most of at the present time. By the way, we also have copies of the book. We'll give you a free copy of the book if you should purchase the product. Uh, the book is called The Awakening Within. Uh, that was written by Roland Thomas in collaboration with uh, Dr. Michael Kiria. I wanted to let you know it is in also. And uh, we'll, we'll let you come with that. So let's do this. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll kick it off again. I'm going to pick up the gauntlet where I had dropped it the other day. Cancer in the news. It grabbed me on Monday. I'm back with it today. By the way, what do you think about some of the things I've mentioned? I'd be interested to hear from you. Or just change the topic to something that you're more comfortable with. 412-825-6262. I'll be back in a moment. This is Dennis J. Courtney. <coughs> you become confused about how best to manage your health. It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Have you been to the doctor lately? Was the cake top of your complaint list? Even if your doctor asks you what you eat, the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day is a dream in your busy schedule. What if you learned of a product five years in the formulation that delivers five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce? That's right, it's Fruit of the Spirit. The blessings of Fruit of the Spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit puree product rich in antioxidants and minerals. Your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith, but food the spirit help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugar. That's 1-800-442-3793 for your good health. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. <laughs> Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Here on a Wednesday version of the show, we're midweek, and of course we're uh, we're uh, pulling on out of the month of March here. By the time we meet up next, we will have arrived in the month of April. I'm sort of allowing you to come on in today if you get a mind to to um, find out what's on your mind. Four one two eight two five six two six two will allow you to get on in here and express yourself either on. Issues I've mentioned already, or others that uh, maybe are just, you know, rolling around inside of your own brain and uh, causing a little pressure build up. I say get rid of that pressure by dialing us up and get it off your chest by sharing it with all of us. Um, but, um, I was looking at this is a this is out of the uh, Huffington Post. I picked this up uh, early this morning. Evidently, um, there's a a term, I, I guess I, I don't think I've heard of it before, but nonetheless, it appears as though uh, I should have. Anyway, there is a group called the Natural Resources Defense Council uh, that is now reporting to uh, a Washington D.C. Senate panel. This was uh, this was yesterday, and uh, it turns out that the uh, the idea behind this. Uh, this Defense Council is in alliance with something called the Natural Disease Cluster Alliance. Now, to decipher this and put it in the common English, evidently throughout this country of ours, as it stands right now, or at least 
that they appear to know about, there are 42 areas where cluster diseases have sprouted out, seemingly unexplained, no reason at all, and no rhyme or reason, at least at the present time, no rhyme or reason. Cluster diseases in these states, um, Texas, California, Michigan, North Carolina, here we are, Pennsylvania, Florida, Ohio, Delaware, the list goes on and on and on. Um, what they're finding is that there are a host of health disorders, some uh, cancers, some um, congenital problems that appear to be found in clusters, meaning in one individual community, a whole bunch of people come down with the same disease, the same disorder. And uh, it's way out of proportion to what it should be when it's found in the general population. With that said, this group is trying to get to the bottom of it all, a source of chemical contamination. Uh, this is just an example, by the way, a source of chemical contamination, namely asbestos, was identified in only one of 42 clusters and found in Libby, Montana. Why, I don't know, but uh, they had a, um, uh, an outbreak of asbestos-related disease, and it turns out there was a um, uh, exposure to them, to, to that chemical contamination in Libby, Montana. Anyway, uh, you're going to hear more about this because they, they just brought this to the attention of the Senate. There's still no rhyme or reason for why these 42 cluster areas actually do exist and what it is about those particular areas that allow certain disease processes to be manifested way out of proportion to the numbers found in general population. So more will come. The last one I can remember in the United States, and I admit it's going back a long way, but do you all remember something called Love Canal? Uh, by the way, the name just was intriguing to me at the time. Some place in the state of New York that literally the whole town had to be abandoned. And I forget what the chemical, it was a chemical contamination, what the chemical contamination was found in Love Canal that made that so. And uh, I don't know whether it's uh, it's now been re-inhabited. I don't think so. I've never heard uh, anything about Love Canal since, geez, it must be 30 years ago now. But that was the last cluster I can remember uh, ever um, hitting the news. If you can think of any others, let us know. You know the number. And uh, anyway, more on this as more becomes available. Now, um, on my desk, and I kicked this off the other day, and I did so because there was an article that appeared uh, over the weekend concerning the release of a new drug, a new cancer drug. And this particular case, by the way, the name, <laughs> the name really caught me because the name of the new medicine uh, anti-cancer chemotherapeutic drug, might as well say, is called Your Boy. I thought that was a unique name. I have no idea who came up with that. Can you? Can you see sitting around the table in the boardroom and, and one of the guys say, I got it. Let's call the thing your voice. I don't know why. Anyway, your voice was uh, to be used in the case of malignant melanoma. I took the time to discuss, uh, as I do every so often, some general rules for those who have a diagnosis of cancer or if there's a family member who may have a diagnosis of cancer, some general rules to follow as you, and I always encourage this, please don't misinterpret uh, what may be very slanted uh, in, in terms of my approach, dissuade you from getting this information. I actually expect and hope, and by the way, sometimes it just doesn't work out because patients that come to see me are so violently opposed to chemotherapy they tell me they don't even want to go see somebody called an oncologist. But when they ask me about it, I say, absolutely, go talk to the oncologist, get the information from the horse's mouth, so to speak. That individual would know more about cancer and the drugs used to help fight that disease than any other person. And he should also know, if he's honest, what the statistical information is that you actually need to make a decision as to whether or not chemotherapy is going to be something you want to pursue. Unless you get that information, 
then you go in with a bias, uh, and, and very oftentimes in my office, that bias is palpable. Uh, people just come in and say, no, I'm, I'm not going. I'm, well, they tell me, I'm not going to see the surgeon. I don't want any biopsies. I don't want any chemo. And they're just that adamant about it. And uh, even though I may encourage them to seek oncological um, uh, advice, uh, oftentimes they don't take me up on it. But it's not my philosophy to avoid that information. I want the information, the free flow of information. So I gave you a couple of the rules, you know, a couple of things to follow. Uh, one of the things was to bring to your attention something called, um, and I guess I coined it, uh, something called the one millimeter rule, you know. I mentioned that the other day. Uh, it's as always uh, very interesting for a patient and watch them react whenever they hear about the one millimeter rule, which briefly stated once again is that any time a malignant uh, group of cells has attained the size of one millimeter, which is pretty doggone tiny, sort of the head of a pen, um, it's already metastasized. And so at a stage when very few cancers, and I'm almost saying virtually no cancers, are diagnosable at one, a size of one millimeter, then what that really means is any time cancer is diagnosed, it's already metastasized at the time of diagnosis because it certainly is beyond the size of one millimeter at that point. And so keeping in mind the, the, the issue of metastatic spread and that one day, you know, it may take five years, it may take seven years, it may take 10 years for the metastatic spread to ultimately materialize into a tumor that has a size large enough to actually produce symptoms uh, this is usually long after um, uh, the surgeries are done and everything else is done under the guise of being able to cure something when, in fact, it was never even possible for the get-go. So that was the first rule, the one millimeter rule. The next thing I mentioned to you is that there were always two questions that I would like patients and their advocate, whether it's a family member or not, uh, that's usually up to the decision of the individual patients, but I'd like the patient and the advocate to be armed with two questions when they go and visit their oncologist. Um, quickly, the questions are these. I'll repeat them. Question number one, dear doctor oncologist, with my kind of cancer and stage of cancer, what are the one, three, and five year survival rates with the treatment that you recommend? And I say to you, he has that number and those numbers at the, his fingertips, on the tip of his tongue, and any hesitation on his part to not tell you the answer to that question has to be interpreted as uh, being disingenuous and dishonest, in my opinion, because he absolutely knows the answer. And the second question, and that second question was, okay, doctor, thank you for the answer to question number one. Question number two is, with my form of cancer and my stage of cancer, what are the one, three, and five-year survival rates if I elect to do absolutely nothing at all? And I mean nothing at all. I mean don't improve your nutrition, don't detox, don't, don't do any other cancer protocols. But if you did nothing, what are the one, three, and five-year survival rates then? And by the way, I gave you the answer right after I gave you the question. And the answer is, there is no difference in the survival rates between whether you do the treatment as it's intended by the conventional medical community or whether you don't. The life expectancies turn out to be the same and it does not bespeak of any quality of life. I contend that if you did nothing, I think the quality of life that you may have is actually better than if you did the something. Of course, People always want to do something. There's always always protocols. We should get into them. Very safe, non-toxic approaches to treating cancer. But the chemotherapeutic approach and the radiation approach, very, very toxic. Okay, that sort of sums up uh, what we went over the other day. Now, I jump on the Internet because, okay, I'm, I'm on a run. I'm, 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 I'm focused. I'm thinking about cancer as I'm driving. I'm always looking for more information. 
So I dial up the Internet last night, and I start carousing around and moving around, and my goodness, I came up with some new information. And it had been a while since I had last visited the Internet, so um, let's just say enough time had passed that there should have been some new stuff, but it was eluding me. I wasn't checking. I was going with the old stuff, stuff that uh, made such an impact on me initially. Now, I'll share with you what I learned on this new go-around, finding about, um, and I was looking specifically for FDA approval of drugs. Remember, that was what really prompted me to go ballistic on your voice. The name of the new drug uh, was to get FDA approval uh, for what they now, the company called a breakthrough drug. They called it not just a breakthrough drug. The disappointing thing for anybody who might have had malignant melanoma is, is the past and, and, and was subjected to chemotherapy is to find out that the way the company said it, it was the f really the first drug to be able to have some impact on melanoma. The first drug. That the two other drugs that have been out there for many, many years, they say they have the huevos to say it. Virtually useless, they said. Really didn't do anything at all, they said. Your boy does some things. The other stuff never did. Well, wait a minute. If you had malignant melanoma, you were treated last year. Are you happy about hearing that you were treated with something that was a dud, that didn't do anything at all? No, I don't think so. Anyway, in me going through the Internet once again and literally Googling up, and so you can do it too, go, go Google it up. I think I Googled up something like um, um, FDA, criteria for FDA approval of cancer, big long sentence, of cancer drugs, and a whole bunch of hits came up. And so I started to move through them, and I learned some new things. So here they come. If I learned it new, I've got to pass it on to you. Turns out I need to add a list of questions, a new list of questions. I had two. When you went to the oncologist, they asked, what's the one, three, and fives with the treatment, without the treatment? That was it. I didn't say you didn't have to ask anything else. I found out there's some things you need to ask. Over and above the two questions, how about this question? Brand new concept. Never thought of it, but when I read it last night, it certainly made sense to me. Here's a new question. Dear Mr. Doctor Oncologist, could you please tell me what the response rate is with the treatment that you recommend? Response rate. That's the catch word. That is the new word. It's a word I hadn't seen before. I mean, you sort of know when you're listening to the term what it alludes to, but it's a completely different concept than the stuff about the 1, 3, and 5s because it turns out in FDA language, there's a percentage of patients, according to the FDA, that whenever a drug gets approved for um, um, distribution into the from the pharmaceutical world to the public, the, that they have to demonstrate as in a certain percentage of patients that there is a response. There must be a response to a cancer drug before it's, it's approved by the FDA. Now, what I didn't know is that it's already known to the, the manufacturers what the percentage of response has to be. And it's got to be somewhere between, on the high side, 80% response at least, and the other side and the low side, 20% response somewhere between 20 and 80. If you ask the question, what is the response rate for the chemotherapy that you're recommending, what uh, should be at the tip of the tongue of the doctor, called an oncologist, would be, would be the exact percentage for that particular drug. It's a new concept. Um, I think that it needs to be put in the armamentarium. I'll certainly use, utilize it now as I'm having discussions with patients who come to see me who have cancers. Uh, what is the response rate? To give you an idea about this, an example in the stuff, stuff I was reading last night, took one, uh, the name of, of, of a chemotherapeutic agent I think you've all heard of. Uh, the name of this uh, drug is called Taxol. Pretty common out uh, there nowadays, uh, one of the uh, 
most frequently used drug for the treatment of ovarian cancer. Now, what I never knew, and what the article um, revealed to me, is that when it comes to the response rate for Taxol, it has a response rate of 30%. So if you were sitting across the table from the oncologist and asked him that question, he has to respond, if he's going to be accurate, by saying, oh, the response rate is 30%. That means 70% of the people who take that medication will get no response at all. And as the article mentioned, wouldn't it be interesting if it could document how many people would really take that drug if the oncologist actually was asked and had to respond and say that the response rate is 30%? I don't think too many people would be signing up for tax all yet because the question isn't answered and because the issue never comes up the patient believes that they're being presented uh, I guess with a fair shake and I think what these numbers always point out is um, at least without it coming up on the table it's never a fair shake I really feel that this is uh, pretty much the way you have to push it so a new question gets added to the previous two questions, and that is, dear Mr. Doctor Oncologist, what is the response rate for that particular drug? And you can keep that in mind with making decisions about whether you want to utilize it in your therapy for cancer therapy treatment program or not. Next point. Um, there's a new push. I didn't realize there was a new push in the oncology community, but the new push is to use multi-chemo mixtures. Like I mentioned Taxol. You know, that I've heard it used as a sole agent in treating ovarian cancer. There's a cisplatin, which is uh, used as a sole agent. There's carboplatin, which is used as a sole agent. Singular agents have been the mainstay, at least in that fall I can remember, in the treatment of cancer. Well, not anymore. And so what we get now is a mixture of multiple agents. Um, for instance, an example given was a case that involved a gentleman who had non-small cell um, cancer of the lung. And... Um, was given a Vastin, which isn't even approved for that, by the way. I, I don't know how he ends up getting a Vastin, but he does. And then, listen to what else. Now, here, here's the full treatment regime for this particular individual with that cancer. He got a Vastin plus gemitidine, I don't know what it is, plus carboplatin, I do know what that is, plus venora then norelabine, I don't know what that is, plus high-dose tamoxifen, followed by gamma interferon and um, and, dox, and the doxic and and, and, and and that was followed by anti-cancer 125 multiclonal antibodies. Now, I had never heard of such mixtures before. It appears to be the new trend in chemotherapy. They say one agent alone doesn't seem to do it, at least from their perspective. It takes multiple agents to do it. Now, I still say to you, if you keep your questions on what's about you, the one, three, and five-year surveillance survival rates just don't change. I say that they're the same. But I wonder what kind of devastation and what kind of havoc gets wreaked upon the individual who, if they submit to chemotherapy and get these multi, these cocktails of, you know, five, six, and seven uh, chemotherapeutic drugs, any one of which is bad on you, but to have five or six or seven of them at one time, I think the, uh, the results are, are unbelievably detrimental in terms of quality of life issues alone. So you need to be on the uh, lookout for these mixtures because 
they have come to a hospital near you. I got a feeling, and I was unaware that mixtures have um, sort of supplanted single agents, which they feel don't really do the job. Huh. How they can say that the mixtures do, ah, is beyond me. I don't know. Okay. Next concept I picked up by looking at the uh, Internet last night. Um, and this was from people who are working as advocacy agents, okay? And there's one such group um, uh, had to deal with uh, lymphoma patients. And here's what they said, and I, I certainly can empathize with this, because the entire picture for the bulk of the cancers is to follow the CT scan, okay? They have set up the CT scan as the way that we, meaning the medical profession and the family, should be looking about how the, treat, the treatment is working um, and that you should be looking for some shrinking of the actual tumor itself and so that we get a CT scan when we, we begin and then we do chemotherapy and then at the end of whatever round of chemotherapy it is, we get another CT scan to see if the tumor has shrunk at all because you can measure it. You can actually you know, use your little ruler there and measure the size of the tumor to see if tumor shrinking has occurred. Now, tumor shrinking does not mean that the tumor is dead. It just might mean that you're able to shrink it. But it is what the oncology community has set up as the way we're going to judge how successful a treatment is. Problem is that the CT scan is the most... Uh, is the most radiation exposure anyone could ever get from the medical community. And uh, it was not uncommon, supposedly, uh, according to these uh, advocacy groups, it's not uncommon for patients to receive upwards of 20 full-body CT scans in a year or two to just follow the course of the treatment. Now, I hate to turn the lights off, to see if the patients actually glowed in the dark. But I got to tell you, after 20 full body CT scans in as little as what might be a year or two, um, if you did turn the lights off, I bet you the patient would glow. And this is all to see how maybe one tumor was responding to what they were utilizing. They say, the advocacy group said, hey, what about uh, Let's not use the CT scan anymore. Uh, what do you think? Could we maybe go to the MRI instead? By the way, nobody uses MRIs for this. I will tell you that the CT scan is what the surgeons have set up as their standard, and the MRI has not been the standard, and it's going to have to take a patient to insist that from the get-go, because you could easily measure with an MRI as you could with a CT, why they keep utilizing such radiation exposure, and it is a mammoth with the use of CT scans. Why they would do that, I just don't know. And they should automatically, on their own, without even being told, should go to the lesser uh, injurious and harmful to a human being, which is the use of an MRI instead of a CT scan, and use that to follow the course of their disease. At least in the, under the guise of, I'm here to help you, let's see how our treatment's going, you're not doing further harm, which I truly believe after 20 CT scans, you have done a bunch of harm. Okay, let's take a short break. What do you think so far, folks? I don't hear that phone ringing. Maybe this is just too um, intrusive of a discussion. i got one more concept to hit when I come back, and then I'm going to bring this cancer discussion to a close. Something called indolent cancer. Never heard the term before. How did I look it up? Indolent cancers, they say, don't attempt to follow a patient with an indolent cancer. To find out what I mean when we return, be back in just a moment.
to help your family eat healthier? Instead of learning to disguise tofu in wondrous ways, how about some real nutritional power? If your family has the typical American palate for fries, pizza, and burgers, giving your family the blessing of good nutrition is a struggle. Fruit of the Spirit is the answer for your family's nutritional needs. Fruit of the Spirit is an all-natural, whole fruit puree made from fresh fruits native to the Holy Land with alkalizing minerals. Fruit of the Spirit was five years in the formulation, the work of a team of top nutritional experts with independent science to confirm its antioxidant power. One ounce a day provides the equivalent of five servings of fruits and minerals. Fruit of the Spirit is convenient, affordable, and delicious. Even your picky family will sing the praises of Fruit of the Spirit. Give your loved ones a blessing of good nutrition. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of Spirit, a blessing for your good health. That's 1-800-442-3793. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough that no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Heard here on KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you on this Wednesday version of the show. We allowed you to come on in and open it up if you'd like. Uh, the number 412-825-6262. We've been talking a lot about cancer therapies, and uh, I know it's not a pleasant conversation, but this grabs me every once in a while. You've got to put up with my little idiosyncrasies. We do have somebody knocking on the door right now. Let's let him in the store. Hello. Welcome aboard. And what's on your mind? Good morning, Dr. Gloom. I understand that a Paul has overcome the entire western Pennsylvania area. It doesn't sound good, does it? I, I think you've, you, you've petrified everybody out there, so I felt it incumbent upon myself. Thanks for breaking the ice, okay? The ice. <laughs> Thanks for breaking the ice. But I just, I, I, I know it's gloom, and but, but hey, it's what the industry is, and so it's oh, a gloomy true. business, boy. Uh, there should be more conversations like this to alert people, and I, I love your discussion about the response rate. I think that was key uh, to, to a conversation with, uh, with entering some type of potential uh, therapy. And it's not getting asked. It's not, like Dr. Crow yeah. used to say, if you have a choice, take the placebo. <laughs> right. Yeah. How about uh, that? Yeah. In this particular case, uh, I think isn't, if my recollection is correct, 30% response rate is about equivalent to a placebo. Uh, you were actually right. Actually, believe placebos can be as high as 40 to 50%. Yeah, and, amazing. And uh, uh, it, is, yeah, it, is, it is wild, uh, and yet these, the, the industry moves on. And the reading last night, and it had been a while since I went and plowed into the literature, and so I spent most of my evening just moving through this stuff. But I came up with that new term, and I had never heard of it before. So it just add, gets added to my question list. Well, when I when cancer patients come in to see me, we spend about, we spend about an hour and a half just to talk about. All right, this is the way you want to be looking at whoever offers a treatment to you. Here's the criteria that you'll want to make certain it gets discussed. And uh, so now I have a new thing to add to the list. And uh, okay, it's a gloomy discussion. What's that? Some members of the family that I tried to be an advocate with, but I always remember the doctor stressing <laughs> it's always the risk to reward ratio, which always puzzled me because they, they never really explained the risk. Uh, it more or less emphasized the reward, and and uh, and so I don't know how any normal 
a human being out there um, who's not familiar with all these statistics and studies uh, can evaluate risk to reward. And it seems to me that is the stepping stone that medicine uses most commonly when we uh, enter these kinds of discussions. But uh, I know uh, I had <coughs> a family member of mine also go through a bone marrow uh, transplant unsuccessfully at my dad. But uh, uh, you were referring to these mixtures, which they call cocktails, yeah. have been used for decades, actually. Uh, they always seem to focus on those studies that showed <laughs> better response rates or improved response rates uh, when they uh, formulated a cocktail. And um, I, I do recall some of them are very, very hard on other organs, particularly the Adriamycin is used a lot. Heart, killer for the heart. Adriamycin yeah. Yeah, knocks really out the heart. The heart. Absolutely knocks out the heart. Yeah, and, and so no matter what kind of response they think their mixtures are getting, I still say that when asked the question about the 1, 3, and 5s with and without the treatment, I don't care what they throw in there. And a partridge in a pear tree, it is no different as to whether you did the treatment or you didn't in terms of life expectancy. And I do say... From what I can read and have always found, uh, that the quality of life is better if you had done nothing. The moment you start that chemo stuff, things begin deteriorating awful fast. I agree, and I think we should hear more about therapies that use, like I had mentioned to you uh, one time earlier about, I think it was a pick line in vitamin C. I, I would much rather go that route. Oh, yeah. In fact, I hope before the, this hour's up, to at least mention that the vitamin C issue, and we'll just say it right now, is a staple item in any cancer treatment that's a non-toxic program. In any cancer treatment uh, program, which is non-toxic, vitamin C is a staple item. Uh, I will still offer out to you that for years, by the way, we knew that this was a way to treat um, the cancers, and we have utilized it, but it wasn't until 2005 that NIH and NCI actually, and it was astonishing to me, actually gave us the research paper done by Dr. Michael Levine that proves that vitamin C kills cancer. Now, I've got a copy of that, and I'm not so sure you can get a copy any other place, and I offer it up to anybody who's struggling with cancer right now or just would like to have it on hand. You call up here, and we'll send you a copy of that paper. You need to have it. You should send a copy over to Hillman. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, by the way. I know that they, they, they wallpaper over there with it because my patients carry that article in to see their oncologist, and their oncologist never receive that with a, th a thank you at all, believe you me. So, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't surprise me too much. Although I, <laughs> I don't wish to change the subject, but if you were running out of time, I did want to ask you this question Go. about the MCG test, which I'm very interested in. Uh-huh. Um, are you still affiliated with uh, Dr. Carminos? Is he your oh, Dr. Carminos, our cardiologist. You better believe it. Now, uh, oddly enough, he's the cardiologist, but as it stands right now, he does not know what an MCG testing device is. Well, I was, my question was, <laughs> did he accept the results for, let's say, uh, uh, to qualify for uh, the enhanced... Uh, oh, yeah. External. Yeah, well, uh, I'm, we'll have to see uh, the uh, Dr. Caminos in consultation to get the referral anyway. And so we're doing the MCG in conjunction with getting all the information that Dr. Caminos gathers. It's just an extra piece. Um, and so it was never needed to ever get the ECP done anyway, but okay. it certainly has shed some new light on it. I will tell you that. I'd be very interested in seeing um, whatever you choose as your intervention for somebody who scores, what is it, uh, above, I don't know what your... Uh, well, I would say that uh, once you get, the scores go from 0 to 20, and... You were getting a lot of 11s, I think. Well, the highest, the highest scores I have has been 11. But I'd say that as you get into scores of 5 and 6, the way that the the um, the grading goes is that is considered severe coronary disease, okay? Okay. And so what I'm interested in, and I think what you might be alluding to, is over some time now, okay, so we get somebody, they score a 5 or a 6, 
they move through the program, how do the scores change? First of all, do they change at all? And if they change, how rapidly do they change? Well, these are answers I don't have just yet. But I know they're forthcoming, and I'll share them with you as they get revealed to me. In the, in the Dr. Dean Hornish program, they uh, they evaluate after 12 weeks with, uh, uh, you know, exercise stress test. And uh, they can show uh, uh, effective uh, improvement in, in tw 12 weeks, uh, strictly adhering to the program, that is, okay? And, and uh, I, now I don't know exactly what percent is the response rate now, but it seemed to be pretty high. Yeah, I think it is. Survival. Yeah, yeah, I think it was pretty high. And um, I'm just going to guess that it's going to be equally as high with something like this. It's such a sensitive measuring tool that with what we do here, I think I'm going to be pleased. I'm hoping that I'm going to be pleased. Hey, I, gotta, I think you will. Yeah, I, I think it will. And I'll, I'll keep reporting to you. You should come pick me up on my offer to get it done, by the way. I'm Some, definitely going to be knocking on your door very shortly. Hey, keep on listening. I'll look for your knock, all right? Okay, Dr. Courtney. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, always, thanks for breaking the ice. I know it's Dr. Gloom. I'm there today. I feel so bad. I don't, I don't mean to cast the paw over everybody, but I bring this information to you uh, as a public service announcement. Anyway, I promised to start on Friday. I'm going to cover one last piece. It's called indolent cancers. You'll be shocked. No, you won't be shocked. But you will be interested in hearing how the cancer community uh, deals with indolent cancers. That means when you actually survive. Oh, boy. Anyway, I'll see you on Friday. Don't forget, Dr. Kondrat's going to be here on Friday. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney saying so long for AM Impact on Your Health. Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, 